Hello, today I'm going to be describing my improvement to have a look at this is Minesweeper. So, okay, it's not really an improvement, it's like more like a full redo, but he's the inspiration behind this. His code was kind of a mess, it was not following Pep8 conventions at all, and like it was laggy and super laggy, it was bad, it was, it was getting bad. And it wasn't even like Minesweeper like. It wasn't like Minesweeper Windows XP edition. It it looked no it had no resemblance. I'm just gonna say that. There was no there's not even a grid. There was a lot of uh flaws in that, so I decided to redo it. Uh, I have no idea how his algorithm works, but my algorithm works in a very simple way. Okay, so the way that this algorithm works is that we have this area, right? And so we look for every single like uh, tile that's clicked and that has a number on it. And if that number is equal to, like, the number of unclicked squares around it, for example, this one, this one right here, and this one, it has exactly one unclicked square around it, so it will flag that square. And same for this one, it will flag this square, and this one will flag this square, and this one will flag this square, and this two, it sees that there's already two, like, flagged things here, or, like, in surrounding it. So that means that there can't be any more bombs there, so it clicks this tile. And so that keeps working, it's magic until the entire board completes. And if there's a 50-50, then it just guesses randomly. Um, th there's not really an easy way to do this, but yeah, that's that's how it works. It's a pretty simple algorithm. I'm surprised that it works, really. But uh, it's pretty cool. It's, it's still satisfying, even though it's very simple. So uh, you can download this codes in the description. There's four configuration parts. Uh, the percentage of bombs, usually it's like around 18%, but 14% makes it complete faster. It looks nicer too. RNG carry. Okay, so some Minesweeper boards aren't possible to complete 100% of the time. There's a lot of 50-50s. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know that, but there, there's a lot of 50-50s. And so this makes it so that it never, ever fails a 50-50, ever. Like, it will never, ever fail a 50-50. This part means that you can actually play the game. Like, I noticed that uh, in Have a Look at This is code description, you could actually, like, play the game, which was pretty cool. Or, that, that was one of the files, anyways. But now it's all on the same code base, and it's just, like, if and else statements, if playable, and do stuff, otherwise don't. It's very simple. Animation speed is how fast it will go, so, like, how much time it will, like, spend on animating the stuff. Uh, here, so we have we have a field class, and it's just like a list of tiles. So here, tiles, and um, each Minesweeper, this is exactly to Windows XP specification, so it looks exactly like Windows XP. Um, it's pretty simple, and I use this Pygame instead of Tkinter, because I noticed that Tkinter was kind of laggy, and in Pygame, I know that you can update specific parts of the screen. So you can update, like, maybe, I don't know, position, like, pixel 0, 0, and pixel 1, 1. You don't have to update the entire screen at once. And I noticed that was a problem in, uh, like, have a look at this is thing. It was, like, it was laggy, but it was, like, updating line by line for pixels. And that was one of the problems. Or at least that was happening on my machine. Oh, yeah, I don't really remember what happens on the UN screen. But I think there's, like, a smiley face in the Windows XP, like, in the original game. But here I just put the UN text. Made in Paint 3D. Uh, okay, now let's actually run the thing. Okay, you can see this is pretty cool. Uh, sometimes it does pause every once in a while, and I'm not sure why. I have to fix it. Maybe somebody can make a pull request. I'm busy. I don't have time to fix it very much, but maybe somebody else can do it instead. You can see, though, it goes it goes absolutely crazy. It just, like, it puts the flags, and then it, like, moves around in, like, a cool pattern. And it's really nice, I think. And I do know how to turn this into, like, an actual screensaver that pops up on your screen after a certain amount of, like, time that you've just been sitting there. Which is also pretty useful, and I would say that that's something that I would want to do. But actually, this uses up a lot of battery, so I don't know exactly if that's a good idea to do this. You can see you in. Yeah, if RNG carry wasn't on, then it wouldn't. It might. It probably doesn't complete. Uh, I added. Oh yeah, I just I just like while I was editing this, I added this uh, hide cursor mode. So if playable is turned off, then I can like do hide the cursor. Now this is where it starts to get good because. Um, also, one thing you might notice is there's a lot of clusters of, like, ones. 
I, I've never noticed that about Minesweeper. I don't usually notice the clusters of ones, but I guess it doesn't happen in normal Minesweeper because there's lots of, uh, like, usually lots of bombs, 18% instead of 14, which means that it's a higher percentage of, like, not ones. Um, I did see a 7 in this the other day. Oh, you can see the the 4s next to each other. 4, 4, 4. I saw 4 4s next to each other. Oh, I see a 6. Yeah, you see lots of rare numbers in this because it's such a large board. And there we go. I completed it. Now it's going to start another one. Okay, and how I was imagining that it would like play by itself automatically if there's no user input is that I would have a Python program running in the background. It starts at startup, and if there's user input and then there hasn't been user input, you, there's like a way to test it without actually getting the user input, because uh, that would be a huge privacy violation and open to a lot of uh, exploits, I feel like. Um, even if it isn't, it's just a bad idea to collect user input. Then what I could do is, there's this library called Win32API, it allows me to have the last time that it was inputted, like there was input from the user. And so if it's above, like, let's say 10 minutes of input, then we'll start playing the screensaver, but then once input comes back, it will automatically stop the screensaver. Uh, that's just, like, built into the thing, it will automatically stop if there's input that's not the mouse movement. So... It doesn't seem that difficult, but I just, I feel like it's not that more, that's like, it's not that much more useful than what's already here, because I feel like this is just a cool thing to distract you. Not really so much of a screensaver. Well, it can't be, because it uses up a lot of battery, it would use up, yeah, just a lot of battery. And it wouldn't be really great for your screen either, because the, the point of screensavers is, it's like, it's a fun thing to look at for other people to look at if they see your computer off. And then you don't get, like, your things, like, uh, you, people can't really peek over your shoulder unless they touch your computer, which is, like, wow, you know? That's the next level. Uh, so they can't accidentally see things. Okay, I'm not going to explain, like, the usefulness of a screensaver, but I feel like this is not very useful as a screensaver. It's very useful as a distraction tool, however. I'm just going to let this complete this once more. Maybe I'll release a 10 hour video of it completing over and over. Um, of course you can download the source code and run it yourself. Or maybe I'll release a binary file, like an executable that you can run. Again, with the waiting, I'm not sure why this happens. Probably something that I did wrong. There we go. And that's going to be it. Bye. See you. Or no, I won't see you. I don't see you. You can't see me anyways.